After two heartbreaking losses, John Avery and the Enforcers must win. We can't put a, a complete game together yet. And it's getting old, you know what I'm saying? You make me sick in my stomach. Avery has to stop tonight. John Avery is so fast. XFL Player of the Week. It's all John Avery. All right, people. Pat me on my back, tell me how good I did. I don't want to hear that. I don't like losing to nobody and nothing. I don't care if it's checkers. Can this team bounce back? We ain't got no choice. Chicago attempts to bounce back against Casey Weldon, the quarterback who refuses to let go of his dream of becoming a star. He is one of the toughest quarterbacks I have ever seen play football. He took so many big hits that would have put normal people down. But then I'll tell you, that guy said, nope, I'm all right. I'm going back in. Here we go. Weldon's going downtown. He's got a receiver. Touchdown. Weldon returns to his hometown fans in Birmingham to try and capture Lightning one more time. and the homesteading Birmingham Bulls. Please welcome your Birmingham Thunderbolts. here in the XFL. Forget that coin toss. It is time for the scramble for the ball. And let's go down. The official for all the introductions, Steve Pammon. All right, gentlemen, step up here. These are your instructions. You each are going to line up on your respective sidelines, and you're going to sprint to the football located on the 50-yard line. Whoever secures possession of that football will have the choice of options to start the game for your team. If there's a false start, we will restart. If there's a second false start, whoever created that false start will automatically be declared the loser of the scramble. Any questions? Put your helmets on. What you saying? What you saying? You're going to on the whistle. The tail of the tape edge goes to Steve Conley, 6'5", 235, but he's fast, too. He runs a 4'5", 40. <laughs> well, a fast, but perhaps not a coordinated. Bob <laughs> Golick, Greg Benavini. Welcome again to the XFL on TNN. Bob's a tough guy, so he does not have the gloves on today. But you want to talk about tough on the field so far. Mm -hmm. John Avery for Chicago. He might be, Bob, the most exciting player in the XFL. Most exciting and the most versatile. This guy has done everything in the run game and in the passing game. He's starting to warm up a little bit, too. But you can tell from his emotion, he really wants to make this team work. When you talk about tough in this league, you might start with Casey Weldon, the quarterback for Birmingham, who has been terrific in the pocket so far for the Bulls. You know, there's a, there's a hometown guy in Jay Barker sitting waiting his turn, but as long as Casey Weldon takes the hits, keeps getting up, and keeps making the big plays like he has, he is going to hold on to that starting spot for the Birmingham team. And I'll tell you what, he is one heck of a leader. Birmingham won the scramble. They have elected to kick off. Chicago will get their choice to start the second half. If we go to overtime, then, of course, the Volts will get, get that opportunity once again 
to decide. You know, we're seeing, one of the things we're seeing is uh, when teams are winning the scramble for the ball, they're actually starting to uh, kick off instead of receive. Fine football coach Ron Meyer turned 60 last night, been a winner everywhere he's been in college and professional football. Jerry Donato, very familiar to fans in the Southeast after coaching at LSU and Vanderbilt, head man of the Colts, 48 years age. He is from Brooklyn, New York. Brad Palazzo will kick off for the Bolts. Royal Preston is the single man back deep at the goal line, and here we go. Preston will move up to the 10 and grab it to Chicago. Down the sidelines, he's bumped out of bounds at the 30-yard line by Dwayne Butler. And after the 19-yard return, the enforcers take over near the 30-yard line. Well, it's going to be a, a big game here for Chicago, looking for a chance to, to get themselves a win to take back into Chicago. We've made this comment before. They have been out of the, their hometown for about 50 days now, have not seen Chicago. Some of these guys actually have homes and apartments there that they've never been to. Some guys have never even been to their home city. Here's John Avery right off the bat for a couple of yards. Speaking of home cities, Bob, this area here in the Alabama was ravaged on Friday with a torrential storm. A tornado came through, plowing trees down. We were here at Legion Field. Cars were hit by trees, three, four feet in diameter, knocked down. The scoreboard, our Tron board, $2 million board, was knocked down. They've been able to fix it. Here you see the live shot. Yeah. And there's it sounded like a big train coming down. There's bigger damage. There's still 100,000 people are powerless in this area, even as far as today. Lester on the play action, and he stopped for no game. Well, so far, so good. If you're a Bolts fan, this defense lining up and, and getting after it, stopping Avery on the first play, going in, making a play. Number 95, Quentin Reese coming in, getting a hit on Timmy Lester. You know, this is one of the things, too, that we're seeing. I mentioned this right after the scramble for the ball. You're seeing the team that wins starting to actually take the, uh, the kick the ball off so they can get field position. You see Christopher Perez, left tackle. I was talking with him before the game. Very bad ankle injury. He did not feel he was going to start. They must have talked him into it. And he's blocking Preston there, keeping him away as Lester finds the receiver in Roel Preston. So... They get the first down. It was Charles Preston who was pressuring the quarterback and the left tackle Perez had a block for his quarterback in that play. That's right. And you talked about Christopher Perez. I mean, he might wasn't supposed to play. Thank goodness he's in there. I mean, we're talking about because of this limited roster, 45 guys total, 38 only active. You don't really have a lot of backups in your offensive line. We had a guy possibly he'll step in depending on things go. We haven't even played off as a one before. Christopher Tagge, before the game, he's played 150 straight games in about three different leagues. Batted down at the line by Patrick Scott. It's incomplete. Aaron Bailey was wide open, two out in the flat. Nice little pattern coming back for the ball. Good play at the line of scrimmage to cut that one short. All right. Well, you know, this Chicago team right now, they got to get something started. They got to get something emotional right now. We told you before, they're under, they haven't won a game yet. They got to find some way to start believing a little bit. Emotionally, they've got to get a, a first drive success would be exactly what the doctor ordered for these guys. Here's Avery Dangerous in the open field. Not this time. James Willis makes the stop. <laughs> These guys, man, hey, nothing better than playing on defense than having things going. It's one thing to make the hit at the line of scrimmage, but watch Willis here. He knows this play is coming. Talk about a guy who knows how to read a play, sniff it out. James, 28 years of age, said his mom, Ann Lewis, in a single parent home, was the inspiration. Showed him all about perseverance, wait, wait, wait. about making sacrifices for both teams and his sister. Well, he's the leading tackler for that bolt defense right now, and you see in that play that his instincts really help him out. Third quick, 19, quick kick for it. Chicago. Jackson goes back to field and he'll grab it around the 20. Avery's going to try and make the tackle, and he does. John Avery at the 20, so Ron Meyer pulling one out of his sleeve. Not a bad idea we saw last night in the Las Vegas mm -hmm. game. The Outlaws was not a quick kick, but they were able to regain possession of the ball after it went 25 yards. Illegal man downfield. 
kicking team number 83. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. What happens is in the quick kick, essentially you're trying to kick the ball without having the Birmingham team have a, a, a player there to basically field the ball. Once we, the ball goes 25 yards, as we said, it becomes a free ball. But the one thing you run into is a guy not being able to, uh, to stay in the line of scrimmage. Nice hit. Aaron Bailey uh, not on the same page, obviously, because when the ball is punted, you do have to wait for the ball to be hit. The, the ref's called the sound of the ball before you can take off. Well, then going downtown, first play for Williams. Oh! His left hand incomplete. He had to step on Corey Ivey defending. I had that. I had that. That's the day. I had that. That's the day. I'm telling you, that's the day. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Sounds like two kids right on the playground. Mm -hmm. I had it. No, you didn't. Not today. Just say, one of these games off. will start off this way with a little friendly jaw back and forth. But go back, catch these two a little bit later, maybe the third quarter going into the fourth. Well, yeah, he's got a couple of picks already for Chicago. Birmingham, one of the best that passing teams in the league. That one nearly picked off by Jason Bray. Incomplete. We got a running ball, man. Huh? Return alert. Run. Run. Bush. Look at some of the XFL rules here, Bob. Pass reception. That's right. The receiver needs only one foot, baby, in bounds while he has possession of the ball for it to be completion. You'll see a lot of guys working hard. A lot more good, good tough catches on the sideline. I like that rule a lot, too. Sure do. Well, in here. A lot of time. He's going to scramble, and he doesn't use his slide. And he dives to the 35-yard line. Aaron Humphrey made the stop. He's very close. The first down yard effect. Well, in the first two weeks of these uh, of the, the XFL teams that have played Birmingham, the opponents have scored first. This drive very important for the Bulls, trying to kind of uh, break a little bit of a, a, a bad series for them. Nice keeper there. And that's one of the things we love about Casey Weldon. This guy is not going to give it up. He is going to tit. He's going to take all the yardage he can get. No sliding for him unless, unless of course, at the end of the game, he starts taking a beating. But you're going to yeah. see him fighting head first with as much as he can get. Palazzo to punt. You wonder how smart that is sometimes, though. High punt. Got to get to the 41 to go to the 25. It's right around that mark as Preston receives the ball and carries it near midfield. So that was a high one in a dangerous spot. And Chicago will hang on. They'll have good field position when we come back. The Legion Field in Birmingham. The strong safety together. With the running back, it's all about reps. It's all about reps. I didn't get the opportunity that I felt I needed. Um, they felt like a good package for me would be 15 to 20 touches a game, which errors out to maybe three or four the first, first couple of games. But, I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. I can only control what I do when I'm out there on the field. All I've ever asked for was the ball. And now I'm getting it, and I'm showing people that uh, if you let me touch the ball enough, I'll figure out something. Bob, John can have no complaints here getting the ball 46% of the touches so far for the enforcers. But it is, he's, he's definitely got uh, he, one of his guys that he likes to watch and kind of emulate Barry Sanders. He likes to get those uh, kind of touches, but uh, so far today, the Birmingham defense really keying in on him. Avery going to get a touch here. Squeaking through. Oh, oh look out! He was just tripped up oh. last moment. He was just about busted that one through, tripped up at the last minute. I think it might have been Keith Franklin who just got a piece. Avery just darted through there. He's not a big guy at 5'9", 190 pounds. What do I got? What do I got? What do I got? Well, you know, he's close to the first down. That's right. We're going to go out and measure now, but uh, you know, he's one of those guys as he drags it out sideways like that. As soon as he gets those shoulders turns and he accelerates, he really man, he's going to hit the hole. All right, short. You can see there he's just a little short of the first down. Yeah. John Avery, a uh, real funny guy, too. He's very oh, light. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps everybody very loose, except when he's in the huddle. You'll get a sense of that. Oh, okay. 
throughout the game here today. Turn around and keep going. But I don't. I, I think they're all going to cave on you. All right. Oh. First round pick of the Dolphins a couple of plan. years ago, and he was the. Hey. Guy the enforcers really wanted. Out. First round pick. Oh, okay. He's so tiny, it's hard to find him in, in the hospital. We're trying to find the big him there. There he is. Well, I'll tell you what, it's all about getting the first round, keeping the keeping the, the sticks moving. Man, I tell you, as a defense, I've lined up many a time trying to make this stop. Oh, look at flea that. Flea flicker. Little flea flicker. Lester has a receiver wide open. Bailey. Bailey wide open. At the 20. I could pick up on, again, the little chicanery from head coach Ron hey, Meyer. I have been on that defense when you got that inch to go, and all you can think about, getting penetration, getting up in that lineman's face, making the hit of that, on that running back when he comes through, because you know he's coming through, okay, good. right? I'm Every right. single time, except, right. of course, when they're on the free plug. Ready? The other thing that Stat pointed out is he's receiving a lot of yards, 177 yards. He's among the, not only the top rusher along with Salam, but the leading receiver in the league. He's fifth overall. A couple of yards again for Avery. <laughs> Met up with Charles Preston, who had some comments before the game saying that Avery's not running at us today. We'll see. Well, you know, I used uh -huh. to say that too, but <laughs> didn't always work out that way. Right. You know, I look about Avery, though, he has the ability to accelerate. Good vision inside. Yeah, I got You'll see him dance a little bit. A lot of times, if you don't have the ability to accelerate and, you get, and you're dancing in there, you're going to get your you're gonna get your hat handed to you. But if you can't accelerate like he can, you'll find that spot. Nice to rolling. Little soft one thrown out. But will he take the tight end? And he gets a couple of yards. Yeah. Let's get down to Kip Lewis on the sideline. Kip, take it away. Coach Ron Meyer, quick kick, flea flicker. You got anything else up your sleeve? Well, you got to have to have everything when you're playing the Bolts. Yeah, they're a good football team. So we're we just started the game. All right. I didn't think Ron was going to tip his head. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll try the uh, you know fake reverse in the next play. Yeah, Ron has, has won them all in his lifetime. Believe me. Chicago, the top scoring team in the league, averaging over 30 points a game. Oh, nearly caught. Good attempt by Aaron Bailey. Diving was off his hand and complete. Dwayne Butler coming in to make that last play. I don't know if, I don't know if Bailey would have caught the ball anyway, but man, Dwayne Butler would have taken his head off had he made the catch. He came in from his from his corner position deep and just about decapitated the man. Andy Crossman will attempt the field goal. Should be about a 33-yarder, maybe 34-yarder for Crossman, who is been struggling a little bit, according to the head coach out of the University of Miami, left-footed punter and place kicker. Is that what my, is that what Ron Meyer said? Struggling? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, he may have used some other <laughs> choice words. And this one is perfect from 33, so the enforcers are on the board first here at Legion Field in Birmingham. The XFL on TNN is brought to you by Lugs, the boots and shoes with an attitude since you never know what you might run into. Lugs, boots and shoes. By Warner Brothers' new motion picture, 3,000 miles to Graceland in theaters everywhere, Friday, February 23rd. By the United States Army, an army of one. And by smooth Bush beer and easy drinking, Bush Light. Well, the crowd loving it here at Legion Field. Not the score, but the atmosphere and environment coming out in a cool, a nice Sunday afternoon here in Birmingham, about 48 degrees. Bob got his luggage somehow after a couple of days. He got <laughs> able to get a jacket on. Did you lose it on an airplane? What happened? No, nah, they just they kept my whole bag, you know. Kind of going through it, see if there's any cool, anything cool to wear. Alexander near the 15. Got up to the 25-yard line, and that's where Birmingham will start. Well, Lee Rearman occasionally gets under the skin of head coach Jerry Donato. Let's see uh, what Lee's got in store right now. Lee, take it away. Uh, coach, three games in a row, you guys find yourself down early. What is up? Are you guys getting up late or something? Yeah, we're going to have a good series right here. There you go. <laughs> I didn't expect much of an answer here. You know, this has been the way this Birmingham team has started, though. Every game so far, the opponent has scored first. And I think uh, I think Jerry DiNardo uh, was well aware of that and didn't need to be reminded by Lee. <laughs> Lee loves working with Jerry, doesn't he? 
I don't think they will be exchanging uh, greeting cards this year as a, there is an injured player on the field. If it's, uh, yeah, I tell you what, number 50, that's James Willis. This is a huge, depending on the, the severity of the injury, this is huge for the Birmingham Bolts. James Willis, the heart and soul of that Bolt defense, and the man who has really been been uh, really corralling John Avery so far today, and as, as he's done all season so far. But you know, when you when you play ball and you get out there, and it, again, we're talking a 38, we're talking a 38-man roster. You got to get out there. You're, if you're athletic, you play special teams. You get down there. He's got the speed. He's got the ability. And sometimes you just don't know. It looks like he just kind of took a shot. A little friendly fire there. Maybe just got just got dinged a little bit, locking it off. Well, how many times do you seem to see these injuries more often on the special teams where the, yeah. the bodies are coming from all angles at, at a heavy speed? I'll tell you yeah. what, just watching the way these guys are hitting, though, too. And, and a special teams is a place where guys really want to make an impression, so you see them throwing their bodies around a little bit more, a little Black, harder than, the, than normal. Look, look, look. Black, 28. And hit. Bostic. Got up to the 29. Aaron Humphrey. On the stop no. again, for no. Okay, nothing in there. Go out? No. No, he was okay. Remember everything hit the ground? Everything just hit. Hold on. Huh? I'm all right. You remember hitting the ground? Everything that happened? Oh yeah. Let's go over here. Uh, it sounds like that's what it was. Just got his belt rung. But they, they do have to check. You've seen a lot of times checking the neck, making sure there's no neck injuries. But uh, Bostic again. 100-yard game last week. Well, we talk about Casey Weldon and what this guy does as quarterback for this ball team. James Bostic has just been tearing good it up job, for these man. guys. Although Weldon kind of runs this operation, Bostic is a guy that really gives him a nice balance, gives him some options, and takes all, some of the pressure off him so if people just don't line up and come after Casey. He showed us his tattoo, never enough respect on his left arm. He's trying to earn it today. <laughs> Diving up is Bostic for the first down. Unless you're an anchor in the middle of that defense, you're out. You gonna be ready here in a sec? I'll be back. I'll be ready to go. Got a little thing, ready to go. So that's good news for the Birmingham Bolts. Mr. Willis a little friendlier with Lee Rearman, Bob. I don't think I don't think James really knows who Lee is yet. He's, just, he's still trying to figure out his own teammates are. You know, you get things like that, you do things like that. You start, you feel disoriented, so you start like naming your own teammates. You know, you know, my head's okay. I can at least know who my teammates are. Oh, well then, rolling. Oh, he's so comfortable. And amazing how a couple of weeks difference here to Williams because we were here two weeks ago for the opener. This crowd was booing Weldon. No they were asking for their backup, Jay Barker, popular uh -huh. guy here at Alabama. So, you know, I'll tell you what, Kevin McCullough is the linebacker that basically comes free, but take it out right there to Central Williams. Nice throw out of the sideline. There's Jay Barker. He's kind of the town favorites out of the University of Alabama. He gets into this place, will go wild, but Casey Wallen doing everything he can to control this offense and be the leader of this bold team. Good throw there, and Ed Smith, the tight end for a gain of a couple. You know, they're mixing it up pretty good between the run game and the passing attack, getting it out wide on the sidelines, dumping it off in the middle, seeing Boston run the ball a little bit. Left. Yeah, and I think this variation is going to take a little bit of the heat off of Casey Weldon. Left. Well, Jay Barker led the tie to an undefeated national championship season in 92. So Casey Weldon, he's well aware of how popular this guy is. But he also knows the coach and the team have confidence in him. Weldon going long. Jackson oh. with an arm out, nearly pulled it in with one hand. It was incomplete, but at least thrown to the point where it could not be picked off. And that's, again, the, the moxie of the quarterback, Weldon. Yeah, he's not, uh, he'll work his short and work the short game a little bit, but then they want to keep that defense stretched. A little double move, nice double move by Quincy Jackson, but good coverage. Good coverage by the enforcers. All right, now here it is. The big punt, it's got to go to the 33-yard line, and it's live. And you notice Chicago is a player. 
right up around that 33-yard line just in case. It's a short one. Palazzo gets it off, and the deep guy, Preston, will get it at the 15. Preston angling up. Good return of about 17 to the 32, and the enforcers with the lead will take over there. Chicago on top early, looking to build here at Legion Field. I love the boots and shoes with an attitude, because you never know what you might run into. This a feature Casey Weldon hopes he is not in again. The Lugs hit to the game. He took a beating last week. That was the Lugs hit of the week, featuring the Lugs frenzy. Be careful out there. That certainly was a Lugs frenzy. It was not one hit of the week. It was the heat that... It was the hit that Casey Weldon kept taking. And like we said, we've talked about Jay Barker. I know what it's like to have a guy sitting in, sitting right behind you getting ready to take your job away. And I'll tell you what, you'll do anything to keep your butt up off the turf and go out there and play. Casey Weldon did a great job of that. Lester again. So Bailey got away near midfield. And Willis came back for the injury. Knocked him after a gain of 18. You know, Bobby Bowden was saying this week that Weldon's coach at Florida State, he's probably not had a tougher quarterback ever than Casey Weldon. And he said, you know, with that boyish face of his, that charm, you wouldn't know the guy was so tough. Yeah, so so, so far he's proven it. He keeps getting hit like that. That boyish face is going to be a thing of the past. Wait, wait, go. Flag, defensive guy, you never had a boyish face yourself. Flag, you know, I wasn't even born with a boyish face. Yeah. <laughs> Avery, look at him fly through the hole, and he gets to the 40-yard line. John Avery, explosive for nine. Nice trap up inside. Avery just seeing the hole, no fooling around. Oh. We saw it early on, how he kind of kind of took his time trying to spot the hole. This time he saw it quick and accelerated. This is a, this is a Chicago team is trying to make a, a name for itself. Like you said, they have been gone. They have been on the road for 50 days. They have not seen their home turf since the season has started. And uh, they're anxious to get back and certainly a little ticker tape parade would be nice after a, uh, after a win. Avery again, this time only a few. A lot of underwear when you talk about a 49 day yeah, road trip. Well, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, think if you, I, just, I think if you mention it with a lot of these guys, I think the word commando will come up quite often. <laughs> Avery. Okay, upright. F8, C8, first down, right? Look for me. I'm about to hit down the field. Okay. Look at, yeah. 50! Yeah. Semi-play action, Avery bombs away from Lester, but Preston could not catch up to that. Flag is Who's down the play. Top block. Yeah, you center had him, and he comes back. No, I have to. All right, what was the result of the play? They're talking about a chop, chop block up in the line of scrimmage. One of the men that was engaged, one of the linemen were engaged, defensive linemen engaged, another lineman came down and, and cut him in the legs. Yeah. Check the left side of your screen. You can see the men engaged right down into the knees. I'll tell you what, man, there ain't nothing worse. You, you just want to grab the guy by the face mask and say, listen, if you can't walk me face to face, then you're not man enough to play the game. Get off the field. Number 67 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Replay. First down. Leslie Fennel and Benny Anderson, a backup offensive lineman. They're going to back 15. I had a guy in, in, in training camp one time. It was, and uh, I actually, the guy did it like five times in a row finally. I walked, I walked into their huddle. And I told the vets on his team, I said, tell this wolf to stay off my knees or I'm going to come back and I'm going to kill him. <laughs> they said, Bob, go back to your huddle, will you? Give it Avery. He got a few yards to midfield. Charles Preston crunched him down. Good job, baby. Good job, Jimmy. See James Willis back in. Let's check out, see how he's uh, running things. See if the cobwebs are out of the head yet. Bag on. Bag on. Bag, bag, bag. Now he called the, back, called the defense all right. Sag Orange. Back, yeah. What's that? What is that? Well, hopefully it's the right defense for that team. <laughs> <laughs> Good insight. 
There's a throw complete. Junior Lord, nice grab. He pulled it in around the 40. Oh, that's a good play by the receiver. We're seeing pretty crisp passing on both sides, which you kind of expected because Lester and Weldon are two of the better quarterbacks so far in the league. You still, you're starting to see a little bit more, uh, a little sharpness, more sharpness out of the receivers. 99, stay going. Get off, D. Sounds like they're just kind of, kind of playing by, uh, kind of a base coverage, uh, zone coverage uh, defense against uh, basically a, looks like a pass oriented, got a shotgun situation. Avery's in the front of me. Watch it though, he goes downfield. That is a late hit. And nobody home. I thought that was fine. That was a late hit on the receiver, on the defensive back? No, it, it was a late hit. No, it was a late hit on the quarterback. Oh, on the quarterback, yeah. yeah. Quentin oh, Reese came well. through right at the end and uh, all day. took a big, big shot at Tim Lester. What? All right. Bob, that's real close. I mean, he just no, delivered the ball. As a defensive guy, I agree with you. I wouldn't be calling that. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> you know what, though? As, as a coach. The guy's coming at him. I know. You run all that, you run all that way, man. You work that hard. You might, you're going to hit something. Back in the go. As a coach, though, every once in a while, you don't mind a, a, these aggressive penalties. It's the stupid penalties that you can't stomach. Well, Chicago will get some time to talk it over. The clock winding out for the first quarter as the enforcers moving it down. They have the early lead here in Birmingham. Back in Birmingham, and Tim Lester taking one for the team here, Bob. That's for sure. Quentin Reese came around, gave him a late hit. <laughs> I'll take those shots all day. Let's go. We need this. Hey, any way, any way you can move the sticks to get that first down as an offense, you're going to do it. And if it means taking a shot in the back and get a penalty, they'll do that too, man. Yeah, without that hit, it would have been an incomplete That's right. pass. Now they're in field goal range at the very least. Marching at the 24. Flag 338. Avery, look at him down. Oh, look at that. The ball. Oh. And Birmingham has recovered. Calhoun oh. oh. recovered it. Avery coughing it up. Well, that's exactly what Birmingham needed to do. People talk about stats all the time, but it's it's the takeaways that really dictate what happens in the game. Good, strong tackle, forcing that ball out. All that momentum that Chicago has been building up on that drive. All the good fortune they had going. All gone now, Birmingham's got it. You look at last week, Birmingham was ignited by the defense. Right. On a great play by Butler. Stupid Anthony DeCoe's the there. Blue 88, hit! Awesome. Hit me, hit me! Removing. Another flag thrown the last moment as Bostic changed direction. Got down there in scoring territory. What happened on that play? They've been sloppy with the ball. That's it. Well, John Avery, as you hey. saw, the game face uh, when the when the game is on. Calvin Jackson, this whole season has been punctuated by you guys bending and not breaking once again. A big play for the defense. Definitely. We needed it. They were moving the ball. Chris came in and struck the ball. I was there to pick it up. And hopefully our offense can do something with it. Uh, we can go on and win this game. Now, do you guys plan on this uh, this excitement by letting them drive down the field and come up with a big play? I mean, we don't want it, but we're going to take it as, as they give it. Um, we're going blow for blow. It's like the heavyweight fight. Whoever lasts long is going to win. Well, in the fake. Bostic dropped the ball. Incomplete. Chris Schelling caused that fumble. We were talking about last week's uh -huh. play with caused the touchdown on Butler as he made the hit on the Cosmo. That turned the whole game around. Right. Fourth quarter of and last you, week's game. And you saw Kip talking to John Avery. And here's the were guy. You, I mean, open? you talk about this being Double a team shot, game. 24 option on one. But when it comes down to you, no, one no, guy no, no, no. that you can specifically say, hey, I dropped the ball. Yeah. Man, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Right now, John hey. Avery can't wait to get that ball back. Blue 88, hit! Drop. Inside and off, it's Bostic. And he is 
is earning his yards, and you can hear the bunchy going along just for a couple of yards. A big inning by Chicago. It's going to be close to a first down. It is. It. Well, the one thing is both these offenses, they're, they're finding out that there's a lot of yardage there. I mean, there's a lot of yards in front of them. They have got to get it going. They've got to keep the sticks moving. And if they don't, you know, it, 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 becomes down, it comes down to field position game. Black 90. Hey, he moves. He moves. He moves. Black 90. Good hit. <laughs> Well then, nice. short throw to Williams, gain of five. You know, for a team that, uh, that that's coming on, they have got some good timing down between Sorry, the quarterbacks go. and receivers. Come on, Nick. You saw move. He goes back up. Check eight coming through. Ready? Hey, I'm probably saw move now. Chicago came in last in the league against the pass. And while uh, they're working Boston game, certainly Weldon's well aware of those numbers. Steve Smith in motion. Boston earning some yardage to the 40s. Birmingham, one of the teams that has not decided to use nicknames. We asked James Bostic why the team said, let's go. let's go with our last name in the back. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, when people don't know you, a nickname, people still not going to know you. So we told young guys, you know, like, if you want somebody you want to do good, you want somebody to recognize you, show them your name. Well, Craig, there's definitely going to be some names that we're going to recognize after a while. Bostic is one of them. Six rushes, 20 yards so far. It's tough yardage, but he's a big part of this bold offense. Well then. Nice. Oh, oh. It. Now they're going to incomplete. They're going to call it incomplete. Cortine really should have had that ball. The well-thrown strike. Cortine was diving, and he could not come up with it. You know, that receiver position, it's all, I mean, there's a lot of responsibility. you got to get away, especially in the XFL. you got to get away from the bump and run if they're going to man you. you got to be able to find the open spot. But then, on top of all that, you got to be able to catch the ball. Without catching the ball, the rest is moot. Should he have had this one? Watch this here. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. He makes the break inside, finds an open spot. Yeah. The ball hits him. And it could have hit him in a better place. Banged his knee and appears on the play. You see him finish up Ouch. at the end. They took a shot on him. Uh, yeah, he got his ankle twisted a little bit there at the end. Yeah. The guy who hit him was Darren Humphrey, who was playing with a chip on his back, shoulder. Watch your back. He says that Chicago has just given away five grand in their first two games. Yeah. We talked about them being 0-2, but they have been in both games. In fact, still they blew the game. As you look at Humphrey last week against the Lakers. 35. Back in the play. <laughs> Oh. Looked like Jason Chorak numbers number uh, what number what number Looked like number 97 want to ask me ref <laughs> Prior to the snap encroachment defense number 97 yeah, five-yard penalty you. it's still second down I try to help the guy out whenever I can We're all over there Hey hey Hey, they ain't going anywhere. They ain't going anywhere. Well, they had swapped out some of their some of their personnel. They had taken a defensive back off. Troy Saunders came off, and um, uh, Aaron Humphreys had come in, so they changed the defensive personnel a little bit. It was everybody's a little jumpy up front. Side hand off Bostic. Got away from one tackle. Oh, and he got to the 47 again. Trey, little Connor Trey, OT, backside tackle and guard, Poland lead block, but more, more importantly, watch at the end of this run. Number 29, Quincy Coleman should be embarrassed. That Bostic stiff armed him that bad. Oh my God. Bostic is uh, 227. <laughs> yeah. Quincy Coleman, 185 pounds. Watch it right here. Hey, as a defensive guy, you don't want to watch the video the next day. Great catch by Williams. A 
man of these two guys on the same page or what? 12 into Williams for a big gain of 17. Wow, a lot of experience in the pro game for Stephen Williams and Boy, the chemistry that's developed between him and Weldon now Ooh. certainly something that the Birmingham crowd's got to be excited about. Birmingham, their best march of the game. They fell down 19 zip in their first game, 6 zip last week. They're able to come back for the win last week. You, you go, go, hit. Oh, and hit. Weldon right open, Quincy Jackson. You know, one of, seven. These guys are wide open here. For and one, of the, one of the things, too, looking at the Bolts, I mean, this is a team that is more of a ver vertical team. Every once in a while, you'll see them dump something out into the flat or out intermediate, short intermediate game. But mostly, you want to see guys in slants, guys in the middle, long guys. And uh, they'll get open, and Casey Waldo will take a shot in the back just like that again. Black, 29. Black, 29. Good job, good job. Time out called by the Chicago Time out. Enforcers. Chicago, it's their fault. Okay, now I'm going to get here. The XFL on TNN is brought to you by the Motor Oil that provides maximum protection. Castrol GTX Drive Hard. By Buell American Motorcycles. To win one, visit XFL.com. By Burger King, got the urge. And by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Hey, these Bolt fans are having fun and watching their Bolts on the best drive of the game so far for the home team. Look at that, nine plays, 59 yeah. yards so far, eating up some clock. Blue 29. Blue 29. Blue 29. Hit. Hit. Bostic finds a hole. He's got the first down inside the 15. And the drive moves on for the Bolts with a 14 gain of six. What a mix they've got going offensively up, between the pass game up, and the running up. game. Blue 29, hit! Straight hand off. Bostic finds a hole, accelerates, well, well, well. and gets what he can get, a nine-yard run. Beautiful. Come. Yeah. Hit! Hit! It's Bostic again, quick step, but he was hit nicely in the back there. Ray Austin came up from a strong safety yep. spot with a good way to get Bostic tripped up. From a defensive standpoint, up, one of the things you always take a shot for him, there you see Gordine. We saw him with the, uh, the ankle injury as he rolled up over on the incomplete pass. Take him in and get a look at the ankle a little bit more, find out uh, how extensive that injury is. Looking at that last play, though, with a guy like Bostic, a good-sized guy, he's got to have his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage to accelerate. If you can, if you can get as a defense good penetration before he can do that, you can shut him down. Right action, nicely pulled off by Weldon. Right over to Reggie Johnson for a gain of eight. It'll bring up a third and short for the Bolts. Big play of the game here. Hey, do you think this Bolt team feels like they got a little chemistry going here? They didn't let it, you know, they come out. Once again, they get scored on first. They don't let them affect them. They come out and they make some plays. Dynamite duo combo, make the play. What's the call here? That. Third down and two for the Bolts. Blue 88, hit! Bostic's gonna go for the first down if he can. Going wide! Swag thrown as Bostic was tossed out of, out of play about the eight yard line. He's holding in the backfield against Birmingham. That's a costly penalty. Although, let's see what they do here. Did he take the first down? He declined it. Or it's going to be fourth down right there. You, know, you got to come in. You, you can't Bob? go over there. You can't go over there. Come on. Well, one, one of your options is having it be fourth down. Holding off take number one. 71. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So Brad Palazzo will get a chance for the field goal as they decline it. They would have knocked him back to the 19, which puts you more than a 36-yard field goal if they didn't make it. I'm not sure I would have done this, but he's giving them a chip shot field goal here at the uh, 16. We call it a 26-yard field goal attempt. Well, I was all for one of the year, but it was a long 59 yard Kick is blocked. And the enforcers come up with a big defensive play. Kevin McCuller. 
Number 51. Nice job penetrating and making a play of the ball. The defense making the most noise here at Legion Field. I'll paint it up, so hopefully I'll be that guy that's on TV saying, look at this moron, it's 40 degrees and he ain't got a shirt on. What the XFL is cooking! <laughs> All right, the Bulls cheerleaders and the fans here enjoying the atmosphere. Chicago winning 3-0, but they had to be upset. Well, you never know from a cheerleader what yeah. happens in the game, because they always have that smile. <laughs> well, and other things. look at it now. Now we get uh, Lester and John Avery back on. If you look at the Bolts, they didn't get any points on that drive. They ate up some clock, seven, seven minutes, 30 seconds, but they kept Avery off the field for that long. Now let's see if the defense can shut them down. And they smacked Avery to the turf on that play, but you got to connect, Bob, on a 26-yard field goal. They're just giving it to you. And uh, it was blocked hey. by McCuller who got in. I guess they didn't block McCuller very well. No, he was wide open. I mean, he came between the tackle and the tight end. And, uh, boy, it almost hit him in the legs he came through so far. But, uh, you know, look at John Aver here. We've talked to him. We talked to him yesterday. He is a, just a determined, determined football player. You know he's going to want to make up for that fumble in the last series. Last a little fake. Going up to Bailey up top. Bailey well, pulled a little fake and then took off big gain of 29 Lester to Bailey and the crowd is giving it now to the Birmingham defense I'll tell you what it was a beautiful double move Aaron Bailey check out Aaron Bailey you're gonna see Lester first pump the ball and then let go at that point Bailey had made his second move upfield what a great concentration of pulling that ball in Shelling was asking the ref to See if the hit knocked the ball loose, but Bailey got the call. That's the throwing again. Another fake. This time it was wide open, but over the head of Bailey, and he had him free. And it is incomplete, but the hits keep on coming throughout this one today. You know, Bob Casey Weldon has to be happy. He's only in one of those big hits. <laughs> yeah, That's really. Not bad, well, I'll tell you what, the both defenses can't be very happy. Uh, they, well, they got, a, they got a little penalty putting Chicago back. But uh, right now, Tim Lester and that uh, receivers of the enforcers really taking advantage of those both cornerbacks. Hey, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. Get out, get out, get out. Picked up a couple of yards by doing so. Well, that was that was the strangest oh, play I've seen. Him. Right before they had four wide receivers, John Avery and Tim Lester in the backfield. Right before the snap, Lester went in motion. Who else are you going to snap the ball <laughs> to John Avery? Chicago getting a, maybe a little too fancy for the ball. Well, you know, it's not, it's not like it was going to fool anybody. He knew the ball was going to Avery, but at least it's making those defense things. After firing that time incomplete with double coverage around Aaron Bailey, Fox and Sloan covering. Well, John Avery's certainly an up-and-down day today, Bob. Yeah, it certainly has. You know, they gave the ball a lot expected out of him. He shut him down early, but he found some running room. Got him some yardage, moved the first down, but it was the fumble that really has haunted and him. six cross. Unsnap, ready? And the enforcer so far. Third and 15, 15 and we've yeah. seen one quick kick today. Just to give you an idea, the defensive backs start about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. Ball three if it's punted. After 25, either way, is going to go conventional. Tim Lester firing over the middle, oh. picked off, in fact, should have been picked off, I think, by Chris Schelling, but he did knock it incomplete, and now we will get the punt. No fair <laughs> catch, and Schelling, <laughs> he's doing push-ups, he knows he should have had it. I don't know, maybe they got a bet going in the locker room, hey, you missed, a, you missed an interception, you got to give me 10 push-ups. 
he figured get him done right away. Good coverage underneath James Willis, but it was Schelling coming from the safety position, making a beautiful snag. The 32-yard line is a 25-yard distance from the line of scrimmage. Andy Crossland back to back. The ball will be live after 25 yards. It is live. Williams had a big return last week. Tripped up. And stopped at the 32. Oh, we got a flag. Big has made the stop. We got a flag. And we got a flag down the line of scrimmage. It's been a, one of the problems for a lot of these guys have been the fact that they cannot leave until the ball is kicked on the punt team. Number 46 on the kicking team was illegally downfield. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's Cheeky Egg Boonaway. No, you, downfield, the flag on him. Hey, your, your job is to get down and make a play on special teams. It's very difficult to uh, to keep the they, to keep that, uh, that adrenaline from keeping you on the line of scrimmage. Hey, I'm Amy. Even though my degree is in early childhood education, my passion is for health and fitness. That's why I combine the two and become a personal fitness trainer. But my favorite thing to do is cheer for the Birmingham Thunderbolt. Thanks for stopping by. That was for you, Bob. That reminds me, I haven't worked out today. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was the last time you worked out as Amy entertained the crowd here in Birmingham? A college degree, by the way, for Amy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in fact, all the both cheerleaders. I was doing some homework on this. She went to college. Yeah. All of them have gone to college. That's right. Eight are still in college, two have degrees. Hit. Here's Bostic. Amy Beasley had a frustrating drive last time when they took it down the field and didn't get any points. They'd like to get on the board here. They here we go. Here we go. Behind them. Let's go. Trey left. Trey left. 92. Hard three. Hard three. Hard three now. Hard three. Well, you know, they, they know and they've got to have a lot of confidence in the fact that both their run and their passing attacks are working. But they just know, also know they've got a lot of yards in front of them before that go end zone. And Porsche is blitzing. Batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Aaron Humphrey made the play. We talked to Aaron yesterday. Good job, Ray. Tough guy, tattoo, uh -huh. bald head. <laughs> Ready for the WWF. Was that scary? Here we go, double right gun. Double yeah. right gun. You know, six, eight. Z corner, on one. We talk about Casey Waller, what he's doing in this passing attack. You know, and we talk about how it's a vertical game. One of his problems is he's not dropping into the traditional seven-step drop. He's just taking short drops. That's why he's getting popped so many times. This time in the shotgun and on the move, Weldon. Nice drop, fast. Nice. Jordan, reception by Williams with Corey Ivory <laughs> hanging all over him. <laughs> and Williams still brought it in. Let me up, let me up. Let it go, baby. Woo! Let it go, Casey. Here you go. Good sale, good sale. Why up? And a hot coach. 93, Z under on one. Let's go, let's go. I got eight six. You're listening to Step Williams, Aaron. You can tell how yeah, much he's be. enjoying things <laughs> today. 27 year old that wide receiver. What we got? Two minutes. Okay. Two minute warning. Do we keep going? Half. Back at Legion Fields, another terrific crowd on hand. In an area that loves its racing. They got out and made sure they put the XFL in their sports counter today. Hit. Weldon over the middle. Has Jackson. Jackson to the block. And he gets to the 30 before Humphrey caught up with a gain of 18. Oh! Wait a minute, boy, nice catch. Nice, nice catch. Hey, okay. Quincy Coleman, slow to get up for Chicago. This is, uh, this bowl team, though, they got to put some points on the scoreboard. They have proven themselves that they can move the ball, but going into the halftime, they cannot go down, go into the halftime down 3-0. They've got to put something on the board for all the work and all the effort they put into this game so far. They've had the ball for 15 minutes more than Chicago has. Weldon's look pretty impressive as well. Let's see what happened to the Coleman. Watch, watch Boston. Right there. Jeez. As a defender, that's what they say. You gotta have your head in the swivel. Weldon, wide open, Williams! Did he pull it in? Yes, he did! Another fine catch by Williams. Did you hear it?
<laughs> Williams and Jackson sound like they're on a roller coaster ride. That is a, sounds like sounds like Cedric Williams is just like in his rookie year in, in pro left, ball. That was left. Like he's never played before having fun. Or 60. That was a 35 or 60 on one. Let's go, let's go. He has been around a long time, and he is playing like 14, he's been around 14. the game a long time. Hit. Yep. Blue 60. Got him down to the six first and goal. Blue 60. And hit. Well then, rolling right, got a receiver, Capo McGuire down near the two. These receivers, Williams, Jackson, and McGuire all live together. The three of them, they're very close off the field. In fact, uh, they're all very neat too. Steph says you have to be neat. 128. Well, right now, they're they're working. They're, the the uh, defense, Chicago defense, is blitzing, so they're slot really slot R wing, slot R wing, H over 34 goal line on one. Let's go, let's go. They're leaving those corners 46? out in man to man coverage, okay? one on one on the outside. Go, go. 28. Stay inside. Go, 28. Watch the ball. Johnson in motion, Boston follows him in for the touchdown. James Bostick, a two-yard touchdown. His second touchdown of the year. Now the all-important extra point. And keep in mind, they're only clicking around 40% of these extra point attempts. Rip, rip, rip. Oh, yeah, Absolutely incredible how important these extra points have become in XFL football games. Blue 88, hit! Ball been firing the fade, wait! Got it! Got it! Well, that was just one more pass that Casey Weldon did not see completed as he took another shot. But what a great reception in the corner. So this time the drive pays off and a lot of smiles on both the sidelines and in the crowd here, Legion. This is about the most complete I've seen this Bulls team look so far this year, Craig. I, 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 don't you agree? I mean, yeah. the run game yeah. with Bostic, using them a little bit in the passing attack, and then their vertical game, getting into and even the short dump stuff in the middle. They really have found some good chemistry. takes the lead 7-3 their defense holding Chicago's offense in check here for the first half but by Lester and Avery and now the offense finally clicking and you can not only see the confidence you can hear it from Birmingham's offensive attack Preston at the 10 Morrell oh he got to the 25 where he was met by Cedric Curry all right, courtesy of Bush, let's take a look at another of the XFL rules, Bob. Got that. Got that right right here. The forward motion rules. Uh, one offensive player may be in motion before the snap. We've seen that. Receivers usually moving towards the line of scrimmage. And players may not use forward motion until they're outside of the widest down lineman. So you cannot tease anybody inside and start moving towards the line of scrimmage when you're between the two tackles. It can only be the wide guys. Anybody outside of the tackle usually one of the receivers or maybe a back in motion that look at the rules courtesy of bush beer 131 to work with for chicago avery in the open field look out there you go shelly caught up with him chicago in the hurry up they do have two timeouts right or left left 662. 662. Not going here in the hurry up. It's a very slow hurry up. Yeah. Avery. Hey, Damn. Oh. Eight of six. 99. 99. 99. Line in the back up. Defense taking their time getting set, but as soon as that offense is set ready to go, they're going to snap it. The clock just started because he did get the first down. Lester's going to go for a bomb. Bailey 
slowing up that ball way out of bounds. Correct slowing on the coverage. Coming up at the half, it's the XFL All Access brought to you by Burger King. We'll take you to both locker rooms for an unprecedented inside look as the players and coaches Jimmy, break down the first half. Roger. Don't miss the Burger King Jimmy, XFL Jimmy, All Jimmy, Access. Jimmy, That's coming up at the half. Well, the way this game's been going, I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of coaches talking to a lot of players. Last third, no room there. The game may be won. It was costly. They'll probably have to use a timeout here. Big, no. big mistake on Lester. If you're going to make, you got to make that decision. If you're going to run, you got to run. He hesitated. The rush came back inside, collapsed on him, and he's got nothing out of that one. Oh, well, James Willis. Called, called the timeout there. Not quite sure why. Hey, James, if, yeah. the, if the clock's still running after this play, call timeout. Gotcha. They want to go for it. Oh. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. Yeah, yeah, Birmingham yeah, right, wants an offensive right, chance here okay, with 34 we seconds to go. It sounds you like, like it. they're not going to just settle for the seven points. They want to get the ball back, try it one more time. Wow. Hey, out cover three. Out, do twist, do twist, huh? Out, 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 that's out, uh, usual. Are they going to make sure? They're going to get the ball if they even on a clean punt if they're at the uh, barring a great return. And they're uh, deep in their own zone, most likely. 34 seconds, and they're going to call timeout if they don't make it on 39. You just heard it. Lester. They had a wide open receiver. Impressive, but he threw it out of bounds. They don't have to waste the timeout. They're going to get the ball back on fourth down. Quentin Reese with another good pass rush inside. and uh, Hey, they know what they're doing. The Baltimore Bulls are the uh, Birmingham Bulls. That is for sure as they keep a little, keep a little uh, time for themselves to make a play. Hey, Jeff Williams, who had the first punt return for a touchdown oh, was a in league thing, history, 95 yards, an XFL special. Ball is live at the 35, off the punt, up for the nine. Steph's going to get a shot. Good high punt. Great punt, back to the 10, back pedaling. May not be able to rub it up, he cannot. And the clock, also with the great hang time, 11 seconds, ticked off the clock. Run the clock out. Let's go back to last week in Williams. Yeah, he made the, uh, once he found his spot, he saw it, he made the acceleration. It was like he saw that opening right through the first five minutes, five, first five yards of the run. Didn't slow down to the score. Man, that was a beautiful, beautiful run back. Now, Bob, what do you think of the bravado now on Jerry Donato's part? Do you think, with just 18 seconds left, he's still going to try, like, try and throw it downfield or just take it in? I'm not, I think they're going to try, they're, they're probably going to. I would think he would try and uh, get something out of it but from the formation. It certainly looks like he's going to end this for him. Jerry was probably counting on a good return to maybe get a field goal attempt. Didn't work out. So the first half ending, Birmingham leading 7-3. to three. James Bostick, a lot of preseason hype for John Avery, but a big statement by James Bostick in the first half. Yeah, I'm just trying to go out there and get it done for my team. Trying to get a victory in. James Bostick, a two-yard touchdown as you look at John Avery and the Enforcers heading out down by four. The halftime festivities upcoming from Burger King, home of the Whopper, presents XFL All Access. We are at the half here in Birmingham, Legion Field, 7-3 here. A big night of XFL action last night around the league featuring a couple of exciting plays and thrills for the crowd watching the XFL. Let's take a look. Go, 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 go. 
meaning that there's only one undefeated team left, mm -hmm. and that is Orlando, a wild race in the West, but you got three teams already at two and one. Sure is, and I'll tell you what, those games last night, just amazing, and I think a little rivalry developing there with that Vegas-Los Angeles thing going. Great finish, too, with the Cortez mm -hmm. field goal after being the GOAT uh, a few weeks uh, last week, actually. Now, here today, Birmingham, well, they showed some great offense early in the game, yep. but they finally connected James Bostick hey, hey, late in the half. Somewhat anticlimactic with just a dive up the middle, but they have put together a pretty substantial offense, very balanced in the run and the passing attack. Jerry Donato liked the look of that one, and we will go to the locker room in just a bit, but the other key was Steph Williams five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. getting the conversion for Birmingham, and that got the vote to the 7-3 lead. You know, a lot of times when you get down to the locker room like this, it isn't the head coach that's jumping down everybody's throat. All the position coaches are talking to their players, correcting mistakes. Maybe see, they saw something that the other team was doing that they haven't done in the past. So there's a lot of individual meetings going on at, in the locker room at halftime. We'll be back with more. We'll go to the Chicago locker room when we come back to Legion Field, the both leading by four Our the Burger King all-access pass continues right here in the Chicago locker room as they get things straightened out. The coaches have had their say. Now the players are having their say. See Ron Myers getting his guys ready and <laughs> well, one guy he may have to worry about here in the second half who already has five catches and the extra point conversion Steph Williams who had that big play last week for the Bolts there are no fair catches in the XFL of course here's one of the charms of the league <laughs> that's the no fair catch rule makes this commentary very very interesting <laughs> Williams will drop back to the five. Elias missed him. Here he goes. He's got the room, only the punt of the beat. And he's got the beat. Step for Williams is going the all the way. 95-yard touchdown for Step for Williams. Unbelievable. In this league, since there is a no-fat catch, it's pretty much uh, set up for a return. So probably if, uh, if it was in the NFL or whatever, I probably wouldn't even feel that that uh, punt. That play would never have happened before the XFL was formed. What it's done is it's put the fourth down back in football. The only other guy with a shot at him was our cameraman. <laughs> he elected the guy out of the way. When he caught that one, and as I was sitting on that nice heated bench, and I don't think he had a bigger fan in the stands or in the world pulling for him to take that all the way to the house. The Bolts live in the locker room, ready to head back out is Step Williams. And I think Casey Weldon was happy not only for the points on the board, Bob, but the fact that he did not have to go out to the field where it was around zero degrees <laughs> by that point with the wind chill. 
Look at these guys feeling very good about themselves, playing at home. I'm telling you, you know, we talk a lot about chemistry and about what, uh, you know, what happens on teams and how they develop. And certainly, you know, it's an overused term sometimes. But what we're seeing between Casey Weldon and Steph Williams right now is uh, can't be called anything else. They really are getting smooth, smooth chemistry between the two of them. That has been the XFL All Access Pass at the half. Brought to you by Burger King, the home of the Whopper. James Bostick, the touchdown for the Bolts, giving Birmingham their 7-3 lead. And remember this too, guys. I mean, we're, Craig, we're talking about a situation, even though Birmingham controlled the end of that half, they got the momentum. They really looked good. They rallied to get that point, those points on the board, carrying the momentum into the halftime in the locker room. It is still only 7-3. Hey, Tim. Tim Lester. All right, guys, Tim's on the headphone. We'll get him in a second. Uh, I well, got to take this call. <laughs> I love it. What's up, Bob, with the Chicago <laughs> offense? They came in averaging almost 31 points a game, the best in the league so far, and they're held to three in the first half. Well, Tim Lester's a good quarterback, but the, it's, I think it's very easy to see that the offense revolves around John Avery. And that defense came gunning for Bear, and that Bear was John Avery. The Bulls really shutting him down. Yeah, out of four. Yeah, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the drawing uh, the eight. Oh yeah, behind the mic back. Yeah, that's that's the way it was got before him. Listening to the uh, offensive yeah, coordinator go. Steve Endicott. Uh, what about of like Chicago at all? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, yeah, anything I anything that has an intermediate route right, we'll take. I gotta go warm up, coach. Okay, and all the quick. All right, buddy, I got it. All right, cool. Why did you? So, so it sounds like Tim is going to be comfortable with the short, intermediate yeah, round passes. Right. They just let go. So. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Oh, he us to the third short. So Birmingham, which did win the opening scramble, and elected to kick the ball off, will receive to start the second half. That works out nicely, especially when you take the lead at halftime. Mm -hmm. Start off with the ball, and they gain the momentum at the end of that first half on O. Andy Crossland to kick. Curtis Alexander takes a line drive at the eight. Up to the 20. Bounces off the tackle. And gets near the 35-yard line. Nice return by Curtis Alexander. Donald McCall to stop. Time for the Miller Lite halftime stats. This look at the numbers brought to you by Miller Lite. Not by Casey Weldon, although he had to like the Double first half five, numbers five, as well, six, particularly Here we go. seven under the bolts. You're looking at uh, rushing yards, about the same for both, but uh, the, the bolts and the enforcers, but really it comes down to opportunity. When, the, when those yards were for gain. Bostic earning his yard, gain of two. Come on, come on. James Bostick. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Who helped double coach left, at high school back home. Right and, uh, you know, just another one of these guys, and it's almost the same story, who just plays for the passion, the love of this sport that has captured the hearts of America for a long time, the game of football. Incomplete. Oh, you're too heavy for me. Oh, <laughs> dosey do there for Jason Ford. And Casey Weldon. <laughs> Not the first time his shoulder pad has come outside the jersey. Not at all. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks like this enforcer defense looking to, uh, they only came with three three men rushing right. in the last one, putting a lot of people right. in coverage. Read right, on one. Check out the little gun, dancer there. What's this? Trying to get him up. Same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, guess, I guess those right, D linemen right. are a little no, bit no, too no, big. Don't see though it's popular down here. Go out here. He's doing it out. Wait, 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 yeah, he's doing it out. Third and eight. <laughs> Weldon throwing a bullet and he got his man. What a pass. Quincy Jackson on the catch in double coverage, Bob. He somehow slithered that ball through there. Not, not only did he have wow. double coverage between linebackers, Humphrey right, and McCullough, but he also had safety right, and coverage right. over the top, and, and he shot tight. that ball oh. in there. Dynamite. 
Dynamite, cover two, ready? What's happening now is the, the last couple of plays, they're only rushing three guys. They're putting everybody in coverage. Flint, they want to make it tough. They want to make they want to make them have uh, Walden make a mistake, have somebody back there to you know, pick up interception maybe. Back to Bostic. And the ground game loosening with the arm of Weldon. A good gain of five or six there. And one of the problems that's going to happen if you start putting three guys in the line of scrimmage and loosening up your coverage people being afraid of that passing game, then you don't have the people up front to stop the running attack. Here we go. Dynamite Zero combo. Ready? Let's go. Let's check. That's Jamie Baisley, the right inside linebacker. Boot. Blur boot here. Instructing the right. defense. Hey. Black 90. For me. Yeah. Black 90. And hit. <laughs> well, the quick pass, Jackson. They're giving him a lot of room off the line of scrimmage. And that's good for the first down. A gain of eight. Are they too worried to play him? They you know, him right off the bat or what? A lot of room there. Part of the problem, what's happening now is that the defense is reacting instead of Trail, proacting. They're not making their not playing their game. They're reacting Dime, to what Dime the Bolts are blitz, doing. Zero, and they're always blitz. one play behind. That Lose 29. Lose 29. Hit. <laughs> Bostic, big hole, and he's grabbed by the shoelaces by Ray Austin, who made a, perhaps a touchdown-saving tackle. Man, are you kidding me? That, he, he, had, uh, he was just about to bust it through that second line. Safety should come up strong. Check it out here. You're going to follow Bostic right through the hole. Look at that open space he had. I, I may be going on a limb, Bob, but I, I bet even you could have went through that hole. Well, let's no, not, let's maybe not, not get cocky. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on. We talked about the great mix of this bull Black offense. 29. Three plays, sorry, six Grand, plays, six Grand. three rushes, three passes. How about back to the line of scrimmage, uh, baby? Uh, Bostic again. One arm. Look at the strength of Baisley. Oh, 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 oh. Who's got it? Baisley was hanging on with one arm. Unfortunately, say they have it. Let's see if the refs agree. Well, Boston got caught in the caught in the backfield. He was locked up. Quincy Coleman, number 29, comes in. Watch him here. Watch Boston. He's going to get grabbed. He gets locked up around the legs. There it is. Quincy Coleman ripping it out. I don't know. Hey, you don't want to be at the bottom of one of those piles. I've been down there, man. There's, been there? It's ugly. What's it like down there? Oh, it's dark. It's dark, it's ugly, and... I don't know how Shorek did not get that ball when it popped out. Certainly was a fumble. Hit. Good hit. Good hit. Hit. Weldon fires. It's complete to the tight end, Ed Smith. He played a five-yard gain. Perhaps one of the only players here has never played college football. Went right to a pro baseball career. Mm -hmm. It looks like they got the first down, moving it ahead. Did they not call out a fumble tight, in the last play, or was it? Did he call Chicago? Birmingham uh, recover. Birmingham recover. Oh, nice house again here at Legion Field. They are really supporting their bolts. Well, the, the Birmingham fans watched their team beat the, the Hitmen last week and figured, hey, let's give them a warm reception. He picked up a couple backpedaling before Ray Austin ran into him. Well, the linebacker play is what it's going to take you to shut down the run. Good penetration. Baisley here taking on some big offensive linemen, making a play. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's a heck of a ball player, leading the team in tackles. and He's got a great flow, great ability to, to not only get up into the line of scrimmage, but he can he can roam around the field quite a bit. Out of football, worked at the Chicago Board of Trade for a while, may become a broker at some point as well. Weldon. With plenty of time, of time, throwing it long. Could be out of the end zone, though. Quincy Jackson nearly pulled it in, but he was out of play. And it's incomplete. Dorian Brewitt with the coverage on the long pass. Well, Greg, what we're seeing once again is a Bolt team that has put together a five-minute or more drive once again. Certainly, they, they want it to end in some points. Base, base, base. 
but the fact that they can control the, the clock, control the first down markers is something that's showing maturity in this offense. Okay. Big play here, third and eight. What we got? What we got there? 43 yard field goal. Yeah. They do not get any ground here. Blue 88. Blue 88. It hit. In motion is McGuire. And throwing it long. And Seth Williams not on the same page, it appeared. Weldon thought he was going to go to the end zone. Step looked like he cut hey. in toward the post on the blitz. A yeah, good blitz. He had to get the ball away, but he had a receiver hey, in motion towards the line of scrimmage. Tell you what, I, I love that rule. Because defensively, oh, 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 you can have up. the ability to bump and run. So you figure the offense has to have something for them. And that motion for the line of scrimmage really gives them a full-speed receiver when that ball is uh, snapped. 43-yard attempt. Black. Black. A 26-yarder block earlier. Palazzo, does he have enough distance? Attaboy. Attaboy. No, he's short. This time it was straight, but Palazzo came up a couple of yards shy. And so does Birmingham. Trying to go on the board early here in the third. So another long drive by the Bolts. That winds up with no points. 7-3. What is going on with Chicago here? Again, averaging almost 31 a game. Highest scoring team in the league. And they've been shut down so far. Lester. That pass on the money to Bailey. Up to the 45. One of the interesting characters of the Bolts, a guy who had another job before football, Jimmy Brumbaugh. My name is Jimmy Brumbaugh. I'm with the Birmingham Thunderbolts defensive tackle. And before I got into XFL, I worked for a company in Montgomery making boxes. We made small boxes, big boxes, bolt boxes, all kinds of boxes. Well, I worked the midnight shift. You know, we'd have 90,000 boxes to move out for that week. And those days working in that factory and making these boxes made me really appreciate it. John Avery appreciating his chance to run there with a good gain. As you saw the story of Jimmy Brumbaugh, who said well, we hope he didn't know there were so many different sizes of boxes to make. But. <laughs> Almost sounded like uh, the, the whole shrimp thing. <laughs> you have shrimp kebab, <laughs> scale of shrimp. What kind of boxes you got there, Jimmy? And, I, and, and I'll tell you what, he's, out, he's watching it off. I don't, hopefully he wasn't watching this little piece because they ran right up the middle on him. Avery. Oh, he was hit hard. Was that Brumbaugh? I think that was Jimmy Brumbaugh. Back on the play. After the play was over, personal foul, 77 on the offense. Personal foul on the defense. The penalty's offset. The down will count. Yeah, the play, the play had ended, and Chris Perez. Oh, jeez. Oh, nice hit by Brumbaugh. Right there, Perez takes a, sh a shot at Willis, and Willis just double. Getting that double two-hand shot and knocked him on his butt. Unbelievable power of that guy. Hey, Perez goes 292. Oh, jeez. But Brumba almost on cue after the piece read, making a good tackle, and the play did count. Man. Play action, Lester. Going for his receiver, who tried to come back, pressed it for the ball, and it's incomplete. Eric Sloan on the coverage. Ball thrown a little short that time by Lester. There it is again. Catch again. Ooh. Would you say Willis got his money's worth I on think, that one? I think Willis got his money's worth. Come, come and back, uh, or. Perez did back, that. Huh? That's, that's, I guess it's just called the uh, the XFL is that freedom now. of expression. Hey. Yeah. If you're not happy, let them know it. Hey, it's especially nice when the other guy gets the 15-yard penalty, too. I got it, I got it. Perez will tell you it's because of his left ankle spring. Third and ten. Lester over the middle. Man, it was in early, I thought. There's a flag. No flag. No flag. No flag. 
Bailey was hit, I thought, before he got the ball. You agree? <laughs> yeah, okay, just a little bit. <laughs> Man, it climbed over the back. Absolutely climbed over the back of the receiver. You can sit right down the bottom of your screen right there. That's a bad, that's brutal. That's a bad Calvin ball. Jackson just a little bit early on that play, but the rest don't catch. So a good play for Jackson as it works out. 17 yard line is the where the free ball is. No fair catch. Steph Williams is gonna have to return it. Wag down as well as Williams gained only about a yard. I don't know if there was a hold in front of him or he wasn't given the five-yard danger zone. There was, and the, uh, I, man, the, there, were, there were guys in the danger zone that didn't give him his five yards. One thing for sure, the, the blood's starting to boil here at Legion Field if it hasn't already. Five-yard belt. Kick catch interference. Number four, King team. Violation of the five-yard halo. Five yards will be added from the end of the run. First down. So Birmingham will take over at the 18 when we return. Offensive lineman for the enforcers weighs about 2'8". He, he was trying to draw a personal foul there. You know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't play too smart for my team. I almost put us in a bad situation, but we're no punks over here. They are not punks over there. <laughs> you stand up for your teammates, that is for sure. He had that Muhammad Ali pose, too, after the knockdown. Down goes Sonny Liston. You know, looking at the replay, I don't even know if, I don't even know if it was, uh, if it was uh, Perez that bumped him. <laughs> 25! That fight was stopped short. There is Birmingham again. They can chuck it at the lead here. Now, Mr. Perez, you heard what James Willis said. Did he actually knock you over like that? Oh, did you see him? He's just a huge man, and he really scares me. I can't sleep at night. He's such a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the left tackle. Well, yeah. James Willis. Hey. I'm quite amused with that. Craig, what else are you going to do? When he puts him, when somebody puts you on your butt, what are you going to do? <laughs> you got to make it look like it's no big deal, I guess. You're going to have to go back to Lee Rubin. Nobody's ever put me on my butt, so I don't know. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. What? Ron Meyer did. He cut you. He cut you. Here's Bostic. Look at his ball. He's still free. He gets over the 35 to the 48. James Bostic on a huge 16-yard run. I don't know. I think, I think James Bostic is sticking it to us. I think he was like a little upset that we were talking about John Avery at the beginning of the show so much. Look at that. And this is what I absolutely love in football. Watching the guy's the, the desire. Just to do his job, to do it so well, it's amazing. Bostic went to Auburn. Well known in these parts out of Louis 66, Fort Lauderdale, Roger. Florida. Louis 66, and hit. <laughs> well, they got a nice block in front of him, and that helped him make the completion. And the line's doing a good job for Casey Weldon Williams on the reception. You know, as long as Casey doesn't have to stand back there too long. And, you know, don't take anything away from that offensive line. They're doing their best out there. But if he takes a little bit deeper drop, gets rid of the ball. And don't, you know, they, they like to work the vertical game, but he can't hold on to the ball too long or he's gonna, he is going to get hit. Oh, tight right, tight right. Right now, this defense is just on its heels because they don't know if they, if they should line up and come up and play run or they just sit back and play pass. Curtis Alexander spotting Bostic, and he was introduced to Larry Fitzpatrick on the right end. Baisley and the boys came up and decided to play a little run there. Number 53, Jamie Baisley. Good Let's go. As a linebacker, he'll be calling the plays Let's here for the defense. Match up now. Stack 8-3. Ready? Match up. Let's start. Let's play it. Let's play it. I thought that was you with the heavy breathing there, Bob, but that was my <laughs> <laughs> That was David Beecher. Okay. Third and three. Big play here, especially for the Chicago D. Trying to get the ball back down by four. And Weldon didn't like what he saw, and he's going to call a timeout. The first for the enforcers of the second half. Birmingham by four. Marlow, Brian Bosworth, Chris Raggy, and Michael Barkhand will have the call from Giant Stadium at seven tonight. And it's a big game for the Hitmen. 
like Chicago, they are 0-2 and, and do not want to go down 0-3 with a 10-game yeah. season. Lose 68! And hit! Weldon rolling. Thinking about running and still fires it! Oh, man! The Ruggers. And that's, again, the poisonous quarterback. Damon Gordine, a big drive out here. You're out here rooting on your teammates, but a tough break for you personally, young man. Yeah, it's not about me right now, though. I just want my team to win, and uh, I'll deal with my situation. I'm all right. Damon injured his ankle earlier in the game. Check two, check two. Went off the field. Check two, three. Hit. Well, then complete the sprint. It's Smith. Makes the catch. The guy who hit 331 in Triple A. He knows about pain, this guy, because he never got promoted to the big leagues. Gave up his attempt after nine years in the minors and then ended up going to the NFL Europe, the NFL for four years, and he's here now the XFL. He's getting the ball now, part of this bold offense. Tell you what, the, the, look at the Chicago's defense. You, you'd think that they would be making some more plays, but I, I don't know if it's just the Chicago defense playing bad or the Bulls just playing well. Inside handoff. Man. I don't think Chicago wanted him to get the first down. You and they, they ran another counter Trey OT, backside guard tackle playing. The linebackers, everybody's got to get up into the line of scrimmage. Number 50, Aaron Humphrey. Makes the hit. Man, was that beautiful. Oh, oh. I tell you what, as a defender, yeah. There's, there's a lot of these tackles where you just got to trip people up and try to pull them down. But every once in a while, you get that beautiful feel of just sticking your face mask in somebody's chest and listen to the air just rush out of their lungs. Uh, that's what you call beauty, huh? Louis Yates! Louis Yates! Austin. Again, nearly decapitated as he picked up one yard in the play. You want me to show you what it feels like? No, you just stay right over there, big guy. Just check him, man. Just you know, trying to help. Trying to hit somebody. <laughs> Let's look at go ahead and rob Meyer cut you about three, three, three. after three years he just cut you. That was it. Yeah, well Ron, yeah, Ron Meyer was he came in as the new coach for the New England Patriots. I got cut. And uh, he, he says now that it wasn't his idea. But uh back we'll up. talk back more up. about back that. Up. We're back very up. close to the back first down here. They may mark this year. And Ron admits it was a bad decision as Bob was moved over to Cleveland. And became a Pro Bowl NFL player for several years with the Browns and Raiders. Let's see here. Ready? Ready? Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Nope. It's about a folding short of a first down. Now, quick, remember this. We have seen, team wants to go for it. We have seen drives already. Bulls have put up a couple of drives, seven minutes, five minutes, and have come up with no points. They're going to want to keep this one going. Try and get that Steel first combo, down. Right. Steel combo. Slot R wing. H over. 10 wedge. On one. On one. Three. So far this drive, eight plays, 45 yards. The Bolts look for one for two on fourth down this Go year. Ahead. Look for Weldon to do this himself in a couple of inches. I went down low and it looked like he did get the first down. Well, last week he tried to go up high as you recall was right and he got stolen. This time he went down low for the first down. Yeah, he went up high. Best thing to do, I don't care if you're a quarterback who you are, if you have some leg drive, it's best to use it. When you go up in the air, as soon as it's a good linebacker, somebody pops you, all your momentum stops. This time, well, decide to, to use the leg drive. A little safer, too, as the third quarter winds down. Big first down for the Bolts, who continue to lead here in Alabama. Yeah, dang it, yeah. To win this game, of course, the big bonus in the XFL, $2,500 per man if you win a game. What do you do with that money? The team decided, a lot of the guys uh, decided to take $100. Each man, $100, donate that towards the practice squad, guys. And uh, and I guess we'll take the rest of it to cover our margin calls with Dell and Cisco. And you know, they're killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in the bank. Um, got kids to take care of. And 
off-season vacation, uh, more bills to pay, and uh, my son's education as he grows up. So 2500 is a lot of extra incentive, I think. Casey Weldon. And we're talking about uh, four? We're talking about $100,000 split amongst everybody. There's the... There's the Weldon family that we've enjoyed their 2500 yep. That's Kendall, Alexis, Logan, back and Kane, his boy. Hit. And one of the reasons he's back playing is for his little two-and-a-half-year-old to watch him play. play. I'll tell you what, he's doing a heck of a job of running this offense, but uh, maybe we should talk to his wife and out, you know, warn her a little bit about those tech stocks, man. They're out, having some problems now. I don't know what he's still sitting there with him. His wife owns a marketing company, Kate Sports, that... Weldon owns with his wife, and that's what they've been doing outside of football. We got 50, 50. Set. Right 29. Right 29. It hit. Kostek. Oh, he spent the the enforcers living up to their name on that play. Jason Churek and Aaron Humphrey led the charge. Hey, let me say this. It's great when you're really just stone a running back, but it's even sometimes it's even better when you hit him when he's changing direction. He doesn't even hurt that much, but it looks like you killed the guy. He's trying to make that cut to the outside. The backers swarm on him and boom! That's a beautiful thing. So you want to be a running back. <laughs> Third Six. down and nine. Louis the eight. Birmingham Louis five eight. for Hit. ten. Very effective on third down today. That was oh, a rare through the hands of Williams, but that did not look like it had first down numbers on it anyhow. What do you do? We got to punt it, man. Punt the ball. Punt the ball. Punt the ball. Well, I think he's going to punt the ball, Craig. So Come far, on. they have one drive of 7 minutes, 30 seconds, another one of 6.40. This last one was just over 7 minutes, and all of them with no points scored. Interesting here. At the 30, what is that, 34, would have been a 51-yard no field goal attempt. He's going to punt it, but again, it's live after it goes Let's. 25. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's all about field position, too, Craig. the 8-yard line. Illegal! Illegal formation! Illegal formation! Drag is down on the punt. Live ball. Fielded comfortably by Coleman. He's got to return it. Up through the 12, but again, a flag was down. You heard somebody yelling illegal formation. I don't know Smart which defense player that guy. was. But we'll see what the call is. Right, we're well, going to tack it on right here. We're going to tack it on. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Less than seven men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Casey Weldon, a boatload of offense today, but only seven points, buddy. Man, I, it's, uh, it's crazy. I don't know. Nobody scored a lot of points this weekend, so I guess it's contagious. Yeah, they have moved the ball very well. In fact, mm -hmm. you look at the possession time. They've held the ball almost 30 of the 47 minutes of this game. And yet, you look at the board, and Chicago's very much in it. And there are hankies flying all over the place. Looks like the procedure on Chicago. Right now, 240 total yards for Birmingham, only 165 for Chicago. So definitely... Crash the snap, false start, offense number 60. That's Tony Ramirez. Five-yard penalty, it's still first down. Right guard out of northern Colorado. Oh, these guys. I mean, this this Chicago team, okay. both sides of the Lane's ball. Left, swing screen nine, first down. Ready? Tough time getting going, and right now back up against their own goal line. Lester looking for his outlet. It's Avery. Did he catch it? Incomplete. They're saying incomplete. Birmingham was hoping they recovered. Patrick Scott. Came up with a ball, but the referee ruled incomplete the only, right off the bat. Craig, the only question there would have been, was the ball thrown forward or was it lateral? And it looked from just on first inspection that it was a regular forward pass. Birmingham may have argued that he had it, but it looked to me that he was he was juggling like he was a circus act on that play. If there's a ball laying on the ground, you better pick it up or your coach is going to chew you one. Well, he, he almost pulled that one in at the last moment to make it a catch. Mm -hmm. He's lucky he did. Second and 15. Oh, yeah. oh. Avery up the middle. 
Well, you think the XFL is raw action? Wait till you see WWF Raw. That's two hours of the edgiest action on TV. Don't miss the number one show on all of cable tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central, right here on TNN, the National Network. And right now, a huge third and eight for Chicago. A disappointing one for five on third down this afternoon. And the clock starting to become a factor. As they're in traffic. And he finds a receiver. Throws it. Even picked off. Calvin Jackson. Calvin Jackson. For the Birmingham Bolts has picked it off around the 27-yard line. That was just a stupid, stupid choice of throws. He threw it into coverage, and, you know, the, the, the face it, this whole, since the beginning, of, right before halftime, momentum changed to the bold side, and it has not come back. Defensively, they're all over Lester. Calvin enjoyed this one, huh? It was, uh, it was, he was just, you know, Tim Lester, and he, and, and, you know, on the surface, you, you don't want to blame him because he's a guy who leads his team and wants to try and make something happen, make a big play to switch that momentum around. But, man, when you're down in the shadow of your own goal line, you don't take a chance to give the ball up. And Calvin enjoying the opportunity to express himself on the play after you see the run. Calvin Jackson, two big plays today. You had a right to celebrate, buddy. Yeah, I had to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the name for that dance? That's a DB thing. Uh, Birmingham stunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Just make it up as you go along. <laughs> I think it's a rookie mistake because by the quarterback, he was in trouble trying to make something happen. Four-point game, you can't do that. No, you can't. And like I said, especially not down in the shadow of your own goal line, put a guy in a team like the, B the Bolts who actually move the ball in a position to Hit. score. Oh, nice fake Nick hand on Well, it looks like he may run here. Rolled down, and he bangs right into Jason Bray. Bray took the worst of that hit by Casey Rowland. As you look at Casey's wife, again, and his kids. Intense guy who loves uh, playing this game. Well, nobody takes the hits that he's been taking. About to hear naked boot. Jason Bray to knock him out of bounds. <laughs> That's just the look of a, you know, she's, a concerned wife. But you know what? She's seen the worst, so I don't think she was... Oh, that was that bad about that one. Well, then, we're dumped over the middle in traffic for Ed Smith. Ed looking for a call from somebody. Chicago played him well with a blitz. Rosen had to dump it, but again, smartly, only Smith had a chance to catch that ball. Field goal. Let's go. Let's get Jamie Baisley creating Let's all the coverage. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right, right. Here we go. Right. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. A 46-yard attempt by Palazzo had one block and was short from 43 in the third quarter. He was one for two today. Way short of the last one. Good leg there. The leg. No good. Wide right for Brad Palazzo, who's having a disaster go, today. Go, go, go. And it remains 7-3. Oh. And by Miller Lite, grab a Miller Lite, it's Miller time. We are back at Legion Field. And the crowd rooting on their bolts. Hey, what happened to that girl's hair? Man. What? You don't something, like that look? Something exploded in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely up for this game. You know, you think she spent three hours putting the paint on, you got a nicker. Yell for the hair, I don't know. And emotion was Avery. He's going long. Lester may run. Going to pick up a block. Maybe. No, Tate can't block for him. And he gets to the 30, well, about 38 yard line, gain of four. Coach, in the open field today, you're at an offensive powerhouse in the red zone. You guys really stink. Well, we'll be better next time we get in there. Any change in game plan so far? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> what, 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 what is it? You want to let us in on it? Uh, quick kick. A quick kick. Jerry DiNardo, again, very short with Lee Rearman. Although Lee brings up a very, very valid point. I mean, they just have not played well. They have stunk in the red zone. He's exactly right. Lester! Oh! Ball down! 
by Johnny Mitchell, who made the big interception a week ago. Well, that was just a blown, a blown block up front. Watch it up front. You're going to see it from, from Lester's point of view. Nobody there to pick up the backside. Johnny Mitchell, the lowest back. pick remaining on the active boat roster, 57th round oh, of the XFL draft. You know, we're, we're talking about a, a, about a Chicago team now that has only run, I believe, 10 plays in the second half of this game. You've got to believe that they're, with the weather, the temperature, they've got to be cold and a little stiff. They're just not functioning. That's obvious. The crowd chanting defense as Lester fires to Preston Gravitt. Yes, he you did. Got it. Complete. Nice catch by Preston. A gain of 12. Hey, despite all the problems for Chicago yeah. offensively, they're four points down. You know, the, you're exactly right, and that's, and that's why Lee brought up a good point with Chardonardo. It's like, I don't care what you've been doing yardage-wise, but if you don't have the points, it doesn't matter at the end. There's, the, there's the rule, too. I think he only had one foot in. One yep. foot in is oh. all you need in the that's XFL. Right. And that paid off there for a while, Preston, and all of a sudden, the enforcers are in business. Back to Avery. Bursting wide right. And Avery falling down as he got to about the 41. He's having trouble keeping his balance a little bit. Now, I, don't know if the, I don't know what's happening. The Birmingham defense think that they're, uh, you know, they're playing that much better. But something is a little, little bit of a fire. I don't know if they've just warmed up for Chicago. Getting some plays under their belt. But they're starting to bounce. Joyce. Joyce Oscar. Come on, ready? Face it, this Birmingham defense hasn't had to do too much in the second half of the game. That's because the offense has had the ball for 10 more minutes. 385. For Birmingham. The motion is Preston again. He's got it. Getting around though. Can that get away from Dwayne Butler? A gain of seven. You know, that was interesting, and I don't know if we can see that one again. Uh, he, uh, went in uh, in motion. Preston Rawl Preston went in motion towards the line of scrimmage. As the ball was snapped, the defender, you know, has, to, right. has to respect right, the speed, right. backs off, Preston stops and makes it. Great call. Snag. Yeah. And down by four, they can do moves like that, pick up six here, eight there. Avery. Chicago just hoping he can bust one loose. But he gets about three. He's close, very close, on spot, for the first down. Avery thinks he's got it. First, you. Yeah, it is. He says that's a first. Third down. Third down. Third down. Third down. <laughs> you know, we had a little t we had a little taste of John of Avery's uh, sense of humor. Play clock at ten. They're not going to get it off here unless they call timeout. Play clock at five. And they're going to have to call timeout. John Avery arguing that point. Play, play, play clock ran out. Apparently carried the ball today a while, but Brad Palazzo is having a miserable day. The first field goal attempt was blocked from 26. Then he was short on 43 yarder in the third quarter, and then moments ago he goes wide right, had the distance here from 46. So instead of a potential 16-3 lead for the Bolts, they are stuck with a touchdown and the conversion and a four-point lead. Brad, a tough review of today up there on the Tron. Is your confidence shaken? Uh, no, you know, I just got to go out and do my job. You know, I've, I've missed two field goals today, and I need to go out and focus on my job and do it. Hit the gym a little bit. <laughs> Big one. Lester and the keeper, did he get it? Looked like he uh, he got enough he forward got, lead got, to pick up the first down. They'll come out and check. I'm sure John Avery with the first one there to make sure. Looks like a first down. And say what, Craig, this is the first. As they, as they do get the first down, this is the first significant drive the Chicago offense has put together since the first quarter when that one ended in the John Avery fumble. So this is an opportunity for them. They obviously got the blood flow a little bit. We talked about momentum. It looks like it's back on the enforcer side. And in motion is Preston. He's going to fake and go long. Lester then decides on another receiver and has his tight end Willie Tate for a good gainer. James Willis in the stop, gain of 12. He was trying to spring the man in motion. Preston for the end zone. 
We got time. We got time, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Sugar wing, four belly. Sugar wing, four belly, first down. Ready? Come on, sugar. Are they bringing the cheerleader into this play or not? No, Sugar's not involved in that. Oh, okay. Hold up for Sugar there, Frank. <laughs> hey, Bray. Diving straight ahead. Not inside the 15. Green of seven. Right. Now, just listen to it again. Right. Steve Endicott, the offensive sound. coordinator. Trio right, eight press for sound. Good job. That's it, baby. Now, they two. Yeah. We're going to throw Hey, you guys got to block here. You guys got to block on this one. Trio right. Eight press, first down, ready? Suck it up. Let's go, baby! Avery, can he get the blocks that Lester was asking for? He got up to near the 10 before he was driven back, gain of two. He's gonna bring up a big third and short. You wanna talk about a big play in this game, an extra point conversion going back to the first quarter. Because the three-point doesn't do it. Well, we've, we've been listening to the offense. Let's check out what James Willis and the guys have to say on the defensive side of the ball. And now the scoreboard says it all on third and two. Well, oh, hey. well Big Mo Big, Big, has, gonna go. Big Mo has changed momentum, certainly on the Chicago team right now. Two down territory. We'll see. Lester's throwing for the end zone. Oh, Nearly picked no. was out of bounds. Butler was out of bounds. And big decision coming for Ron Meyer on fourth and two with 3.01 to go. A field goal still leaves him Rewind. one short. Rewind. 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 He's going for it. And the reason is Steph Williams was able to convert on that touchdown back in the second quarter. That's right, and all, you're talking about a situation where they're, they, they've been having, been having a whole lot of luck moving the ball. This has been their first drive that they've been able to put together since the first. They've got to go for it when they've got a shot. We're going to have a timeout on the field here. And it's going to be Birmingham calling the timeout. What? You want to go hot? We need two yards. Two yards, come on. Actually, we have defense, defense, defense. I know. Wouldn't you like some of the W? That's what I like. That would be. We would not be better. So we're in, we gotta be in range for that, right? Regular, 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 regular. Well, guys, if they go for it here and they don't get the points, the beauty of it is they're still in great field position and they put the bolts back up against their, their own. So I, it seems like the logic here, since you need the point, is to go for it, go for the touchdown. Yeah, regular, regular. If you kick the field goal, you're down by one still and you gotta play defense. We're going now. Coach Ron Meyer, you, you guys feel like you have something good that can work here for you? I didn't even hear your question. You feel like you have something that can work for you right here? Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> Why is he going for it, though? No field goal, coach? Well, you know, we're not, we're have a tough time getting the ball back, I think. All right, so that's uh, the decision there. You gotta play defense because you're still one short even if you kick the field goal. And Crossman hasn't been great kicking either. And there's the guy that's been shutting everything down for the Bolts, James Willis. It'll be up to him to, to make the big play. Could be the play of the, the game Patriots. here. Fourth and two, Avery in the backfield. Play action, make Lester, make run it. Oh, he's gonna throw it, and it's caught! It's caught by... My J. Armstrong. And Lester could have run for the first down. He threw it, it looked like Armstrong, the veteran, may have juggled it, but he makes the big play. I mean, it wasn't with the, it wasn't with the longest or prettiest plays you'll ever see. That's a good catch, but when you get the first down, hey. Armstrong, an older guy, helps the young guys. He's 30 years old. It's first to goal at the eight. Now they give it to Avery. Trying to find some room. Good job of the hook. We got loose of the initial hit to pick up a couple of yards. I was, I was about to say what a great job of that Birmingham defense stringing them out, but they missed the tackle. It was up to, to Willis and the guys to make that second hit. With a timeout at the two-minute warning, the U.S. Army presents victories in life. Yeah, I'll try to get in there. And certainly one of the guys who is a great example of that is the quarterback of the Birmingham Thunderbolts, 
Casey Weldon, a tough, hard-nosed guy, turned 32 get him, get him a week ago. A dad of four came back to play football after being out a few years in the NFL. A Heisman runner-up back in 91 at Florida State. He's not the biggest guy in the world. Doesn't have maybe all the skills, but a great example of a hard-nosed guy who knows how to play this game. Very smart guy, good-looking guy, and a tough-nosed a, guy, for the a guy that'll take a beating and still lead his team. Casey Weldon, an example of the U.S. Army's victory in life. We're at the two-minute warning, and the enforcers trying to march in down by four. Rage and the hitman Chris Marlowe and Brian Bosworth with the call from Giant Stadium. New York looking for their first win, and just like these enforcers who have lost two, third straight game, third different time zone on the road, trying to avoid 0-3. Lester gets away. Man is wide open over his head. Oh, no. It's intercepted. It's intercepted by Trey Butler. He's going to go. Oh, my. I can't believe it. Trey Butler is going to go 97 yards. Touchdown, Bowl. can run back 97 yards, do a victory lap, do a little dance, and st still not be breathing hard. What a play for the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Talk about momentum. Just big, slapping it back in her face. Last week, Wayne Butler stripped Anthony DeCosmo on a play that Keith Franklin picked up, ran 12 yards for the touchdown. This week, after Calvin Jackson picked off a pass, the third turnover created by the Bolts, and Tim Lester had, had, he had his man in the Armstrong wide open for the, for, for the touchdown. Part of Chicago maybe right. stopped at the two, but he had him. Part of the problem is he had a, he had a player in his face right off the bat. And he had to think, he was really rushing. Ball gets tipped, Butler picks it up, and that's it. He has got so many guys running with him, nobody was going to get through. Wow. The Chicago Enforcers. And it was Keith, it was Keith Franklin who got into Tim Lester's face, initially threw his rhythm off. And you feel it for Tim Lester. Here's a guy that really took that team and changed it for that last drive got the momentum back but it was not to be for the one point he got in there it is james bostick for the conversion not a big one here it's 11 points but then again a seven and three could, could have tied it up so it is potentially consequential Dwayne butler time running out for your team they're driving what a great play buddy thank you thank you very much you know, they're driving on us. I get a little scared in that kind of situation. You know what I mean? So it's got to make a play on defense. Well, and all your teammates are going to be loving you because you single-handedly just earned them all 2,500 bones, buddy. Hey, that's all right. You know, it's, it's a team effort, though. You know, I wasn't out there by myself. The ball got tipped, and I, uh, you know, was blessed to be in the right position. I got to go and kick off right now. Tim Lester, you guys came into this game leading the XFL in scoring. How frustrating has today's game been for you guys? You know, it hurts. Uh, we, we've been able to put up a lot of points. They've been able to slow us down today for the first time. So, What happened on that last play there? You know, I just let it get high. I uh, had to step up and get away from one guy and uh, threw over another guy. The ball didn't turn over. Uh, Ty J got a piece of it and just uh, popped up to the guy. All right, Tim. Bob, the Chicago Enforcers have got to be thinking, how are we going to find a way to lose next week? They've had their chances. Could have very easily beat Los Angeles. 
You could argue they could have beaten Orlando in week one. And then here today, driving in, seemingly with confidence, we're, and the big play again, they can't pull off. And we're talking about a team right now going back to their home for the first time, 0-3. It is not going to be a big welcome for them, but uh, uh, hey, they, people got to give them their props and say that there are some, some good things that have been happening for this enforcer team. And who knows? I mean, it's not done yet. So we've got to take a look at, the, at this kickoff return. Maybe we can get something out of this. Pay for play, of course, and you play for the big money. The quarterbacks get 5,000, 4,500 for the others. Kickers, 3,500. But as we just brought up with Lee Rearman, 2,500 extra on a win. $100,000 divided up amongst the team. The Bolts have already said, we heard earlier, that uh, they're going to give at least 100 apiece to the uh -huh. replacement players to add on to their $1,000. Not the replacement, but the practice squad, excuse me. Now let's see if they victory. Let's see if see the Chicago special teams can can force the issue a little bit. Nice. Okay. We need two scores. Two the side touchdowns of that in Preston stutter stepping to the 34. <laughs> I think Chicago is the best 0-3 team in this league. Going on limb on that well, one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I say that kingly, but, but Kevin really, uh, played well enough to win some games. Well, that that Shoot best that best 0-3 team in this in the XFL is changing quarterbacks. Kevin McDougal out of Notre Dame, yeah. where I'm matriculated, is going to be taking yeah, over this offense. Half right, D7. Let's go, Louis on one, on one, right? Is this, do you think, any comment for the next game for Chicago or just oh, give yeah. them some I don't believe so. I think it's playing time. Certainly it's, it's playing time, and uh, it really takes the pressure off him because even if they don't win, you know, this isn't going to affect McDougal. McDougal finding Bailey at the 41. If McDougal, if McDougal is able to get a drive going, it, you know, it's going to do wonder for, for his mindset should he be able to uh, utilize later on. You're always a hit away from coming in any game anyhow as a back exactly. quarterback. McDougal in traffic. Incomplete. Welcome to the XFL for Kevin McDougal. From Quentin Reese, who hit him and Fred, good. Fred Coleman right over the middle should have had that catch. I mean, that ball hit him right in the hands. And I, unfortunately for some of these guys, that's a bad let's spot. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, 668. 668. Third and two. 668. Hey, go, go, go. Perfect. Go, go. And out to Avery. No break for John here. I thought you don't come, man. He had a fumble earlier, and Chicago can really only blame themselves for two interceptions and a fumble. Well, Avery almost got those 20 carries. As it won, he's one short right now. 19 carries, 84 yards, and uh, certainly not the numbers he would have hoped. He would have, especially the ones that are on the scoreboard. McDougal's going to scramble, and he's not going to go down until he's brought down by James Willis at the 45 with 40 seconds per minute. McDougal's trying to get up to run the no huddle. The hey, defender's go, not go. letting them go. <laughs> Chicago has two 68, timeouts. 68. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And they're just going to let it wind down. I wonder why not to use the timeout. You know, quick score, but you get a, you get a shot with an onside kick. Nice. You got to call timeout here. Let's go, let's go. Clock does stop for the placement, but it still costs you about six seconds if you don't call a timeout. And they finally do with 17. 14-3 Birmingham looking to go to two and one. We started talking about Casey Weldon taking all the tough hits, and well, he was a tough customer again today, but a very solid game. He's now with Lee Rimmer. Casey Weldon, you were talking about writing scripts this season, how you guys have been playing by it. Did you write this one today, buddy? No, nah, I, I, I couldn't have written it this good. Actually, I think maybe my daughter, Kendall, she's back in Tampa. I want to say hi to her. She wrote it up, and then we followed it just right. So. Well, as a matter of fact, a couple times you got hit pretty hard. They were, had to show the grimace on your wife's face. You might want to talk to her because she can hear us right now. I just saw her up there. Hey, there she is. Sex FL, I want to... Nah, I better not say it. Anyway, great job, defense. <laughs> great job, fans, cheering the defense on down there. It was nice to actually see a Weldon sign, too. I enjoyed that. He's winning them over. A Weldon sign. He's winning them over slowly. Well, he's well Casey, today, 16 of 27, 152 yards. 
no TDs, no INTs, but uh, that was kind of the story of the story for this this Thunderbolt team is that they paved between the 20s and did what they want to do. They had such a nicely balanced offense. The run game going well with Bostic, uh, the, the passing attack in all phases, whether it's long and vertical, even the short dump stuff over the middle, mixed it nicely, and uh, they moved. It was just those red zones that just kind of threw them off a little bit. McDougal led the Irish to an 11-1 record in 93, and Brad Palazzo oh, certainly off the hook. Oh, yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Although you can't blame him for the first one off the block, but it's the other two. McDougal with all kinds of time. Wide open over the middle. It's time a costly out, catch. We came to the catch. Time out, time out. Last time out used by the enforcers. And a reminder coming up next on UPN. More football, baby. You got it. Uh, Big game there. UPN, the XFL on UPN, the Orlando Rage at the New York Hitmen. And we got a chance to taste a little bit of that New York hospitality last week. And it's chilly. I hope it's even chillier for Chris and Brian and the players doing that, especially the announcers, though. Right. In exactly. the elements. Well, the Rage got it all going. They're undefeated so far. The Hitmen are really suffering. But uh, we'll find out tonight uh, their quarterback situation. Coming back here to Birmingham, you see a bowl team just, just happy. That, you know, first off, they're thinking 25, 2,500 bones apiece yeah, right now. Right. That's the grand. And, and I know we talk about the money, which is a great extra. But, I mean, you've talked about these guys. You've talked about you've talked to these guys, too. They just they love playing football. No extra money for the enforcers. It helps out the rent money. But almost all of them say that. Like, hey, yeah, you're right, Bob. It's... You know, great to get the extra yeah. loot a shot in here to the outside. And if you win, you can you can have a funny look too. You can do anything <laughs> when you're a victor. I can honestly say I've never done that with my helmet. Scott Thompson, the big H. But really, the feeling of, of victory, money money aside, right? For these guys, and, and that's what they're back here for, that feeling of the camaraderie yeah. of the team and of winning. They work so hard all week long, we don't see that. They come out here on Sunday trying to prove it. Every time we've talked to players on Fridays and Saturdays before the game, just listen to their stories and their their, 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 their ability to get back and play pro ball. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just heartwarming, man. Dougal, going end zone. Yeah. Oh. It, oh, it, almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Cedric Curry had a chance at it. And it'll be the last play of the game coming up. And again, oh. <laughs> this must be a thing with the DBs if they drop one that they should have. Up oh, 10, that was. <laughs> well, we saw it before when Chris Schelling missed an interception. He, he dropped and gave him 10. Now Cedric Curry dropping and giving him another 10. Uh, Impressive outing, nonetheless, despite the miscues for Chicago by Jerry Donato's defense, mm -hmm. holding a team, the highest scoring team in the league, Black averaging over 30 a game to just Black three this afternoon. Last throw for McDougal. Over the middle, it drops incomplete, appropriately enough, because that's how it looks for the enforcers. Moved in a little bit, but could not cash it in. And the Birmingham Bolts go to two and one. A big win for them. They're now a half a game back of Orlando, and Chicago falls to 0 and 3 in a 10 game season. They are in trouble heading back home. This is.